Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and all the patriots in Britannia and all the freedom lovers around the world. Welcome back to 2C TV and uh, some breaking news for you guys uh, regarding Tommy Robinson. Oh, Tommy, Tommy. Um, he went to uh, magistrate courts and he's got some verdict in regards to his... Uh, one of his battles has been going on for a long time with the establishment. Hello to everybody in the live chat. We'll come to you guys as usual throughout the live stream. Get your reaction as well. Uh, but we're going to talk about Tommy. We're going to talk about obviously the verdict of the well, the decision in regards to the judges. But also everything else been happening uh, in regards to the reaction of the mainstream and the establishment uh, with this whole conflict. The United Nations and the Security Council are kicking off again. They want to vote against uh, Israel. Surprise, surprise. First things first, let's talk about Tommy Robinson. He's a little bit happy today <laughs> because uh, if you guys remember a while ago, he had a bit of a, an altercation um, in uh, Portugal, I believe. And uh, he basically, the establishment weren't happy with him as usual. So they banned him. They literally put a almost like a life ban or something, a ban on him uh, attending football matches and things like that because his presence, even his presence is a danger in public spaces like a football stadium. Obviously, he's a, he's a supporter of Luton. Um, you know, no one's perfect. <laughs> but at the same time, he couldn't go. To, he couldn't even go to a football stadium with his family, with his kids. Um, so this battle was around this issue. He's, uh, he's gone through the two-thirds of the actual ban. So he managed to actually get them to uh, they, they release him and make him a free citizen based on his human rights. So let's go to the reaction we have from Tommy Robinson. <laughs> oh, mate. I have just come out of court, yeah? I've been in court all day. I didn't go public about this. But I've been in court to appeal my football banning order, to say I should have a right to a family life. And guess what? Bedfordshire police had to go and give evidence. And the Home Office sent someone to try and obstruct and the Home Office person said that we cannot have him going to Germany in the summer. That's what this is about. I haven't been able to go to football for four years, yeah? My kids, I've just put in my family group chat. I mean, I just put in my family group chat. Guess who's coming the game at the weekend, man? So the judge has agreed to, I I've got no football batting order now. <laughs> I'm so fucking buzzing. I am so happy, man. My solicitor, who was Chloe, was my barrister. But Melanie at Football Law Associates is who I used to appeal my ban. Because when you're two thirds of the way through your football banning order, you can appeal it. Do you know what the Home Office officer used? Because the Football Policing Unit is part of the Home Office. So this is government. They came and they tried to use my Section 35, where I was arrested in CS gas, as evidence of my bad behaviour. Because there's nothing else in the last four years. So I'm going football, man. <laughs> I'm so happy. Let's hope I just don't get any problems as I just walk through Luton Town Centre. I don't really care, actually. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm getting to see Luton in the Premier League. Do you know how upset I was? Do you know, like, I live for Luton. I don't just live for Luton, but my children, man. I, my, my, I haven't had a day at football. That's my day. My day was always football with my kids, man. And that was taken through my own fault, because I did hit someone in Portugal, but they did deserve it. They did confront me when I was with my wife, and they shouldn't have done it. But that's all in the past. I'm going football. I'm buzzing. <laughs> so, obviously, he's happy for once in a long time. It's it's also important to show this side of the story because uh, the mainstream would not show you that they wouldn't even talk about the Tommy Robinson or these sort of stories. You ha they have to see this side. They have to see the the real Tommy as well. He in this video he admitted. He said, "Well, it was actually it was my own fault. Hands up, it was my own fault. It was an altercation in Portugal, I believe." And uh, but he did say, let's not forget, the whole thing started because some nutter confronted him in front of his family. Then, you know, obviously chaos happened, confrontation happened. Um, but he did say, put his hands up in terms of the actual outcome. You know, he takes responsibility. But the mainstream would not show you this. The mainstream would not tell you any of this because they would, again, um, paint an image of uh, someone who has a plan. Uh, to bring down the system or something like this, or society or whatever. Uh, but again, on the, this issue, obviously, the Luton's magistrate courts, uh, uh, they did decide this. Uh, and Tommy said, if anyone has any problems uh, surrounding football arrests or banning orders, make sure to use Melanie Cook at the Football Law Associates and ask for Chloe Carvel, uh, the actual um, barrister from 15 Newbridge Street Chambers as your barrister. 
Uh, they were absolutely amazing today. I still can't believe I won. I am so happy. And on Monday, four days from now, he's going to go back to court in regards to his bail condition as well uh, with the recent issues. Uh, so we'll keep you guys posted on that. And obviously, uh, I'll probably um, try and actually attend to obviously cover and report from outside uh, the actual court as well. But again, all this stuff is not going to be mentioned by the media. In fact, Novara Media, <laughs> Novara Media, yeah, Ash Sarka and Aaron Bastani guys, those guys, are uh, still writing these sort of articles uh, saying about uh, Remembrance Day. If you guys remember, I was there with Tommy and everybody else. They're still saying, days earlier, on our Mr. Stays, far-right activists and football hooligans led by former English League, English Defence League leader Stephen Yaxley Lennon, aka Tom Robinson, staged a counter protest against the National March for Palestine. I mean, I'm loving the propaganda. The National March for Palestine was happening hours later. The whole point of us being there, and Tommy, and Tommy wasn't leading anything, he was just attending, and he said, Hey guys, I'm going to Patriots if you want to come to attend. Armistice Day, the actual Remembrance Day service on Whitehall. And afterwards he left anyway. And then some people were obviously caused chaos because the march, the actual anti-Israel march and protest was later on. So some people stayed to, to cause chaos. But obviously Tommy wasn't leading anything in that sense. But the whole point was to go and pay respect to our fallen heroes. But this is happening. This continues to happen in terms of the uh, narrative that you're getting from the mainstream media. At the same time, they do not talk about these sort of issues. Tommy actually himself tweeted this, and we talked about this. Uh, the p people on Whitehall and in central London, uh, near monuments, near moss, uh, near uh, statues, near, of course, the cenotaph, continue to just block the pavement or the road to do group prayers, Islamic prayers. And Tommy said, there is over 1,500 mosques in the UK. They're taking the pee at this point. Um, they're literally, like, you literally have so many mosques. Why do you have to do it on the street and blocking people's, obviously, pavements and everything else? It makes no sense. They do not talk about these things. They, they don't talk about what we mentioned earlier today. That, for example, in other countries, they are fighting back against Islamism and the whole cult. In Iran, there's a rise in Christianity. They've closed down. They, the state had to be forced to close down between 50,000 and 75,000 mosques in Iran because nobody was going or paying them to actually be sustainable. The young people are converting to Christianity and some of them are just becoming not religious anymore. Um, the, the Islamic cult and movement is dying in places like Iran, but it's growing in the West. And this is the issue. The fight is now here. And you have to, again, you can take uh, best case studies from places like Poland, but maybe we could learn from places like Iran now. I mean, the state is still, the Islamic occupation is still in Iran. The, the regime is controlled by Ayatollahs and the Mullahs, but we're talking about the genuine and ordinary people up and down the country. Less than 35% last time we checked are practicing Muslims in Iran. That's a minority at this point, despite the regime being Islamic. But again, this is about uh, Tommy's uh, good day in court and as we said Monday uh, he's also going to have another session in regards to the bailing conditions which we'll cover on this channel even if the media would not dare to touch it. Speaking of Tommy, speaking of the Islamists and all this chaos that we're talking about by the way and I'm going to come to a live chat in a second to get your reaction. Let's talk about the conflict in the Middle East and the globalist institutions like the United Nations and the UN Security Council. Do you know what they're up to again? The United Nations Security Council, they are getting together to do another vote against Israel. <laughs> I'm not even surprised at this point. Is it just some sort of regular ritual at the UN where they just get together and completely ignore barbaric behaviors from other regimes, including the Iranian regime and, of course, in Gaza. But they are so focused on condemning Israel or for example if Britain if we had a strong British government and we were doing things in our interest for example leaving ECHR or the UN Refugee Convention you would have the UN having a vote to condemn Britain obviously luckily for them we don't have a strong British government right now but they are doing it with Israel they did it with Poland they've done it with Hungary any country that wants to stand up for their own interests they will vote to condemn them all the time 
as long as uh, they're not Islamic. And of course, they're in that in that sense, uh, they, they they wouldn't care. They literally put what was it, Afghanistan and Iran on committees based on women's rights and human rights. They had the North Korea on this committee. It, it, it's it's a complete gravy train at this point. And I love how we still have the mainstream establishment people still taking the United Nations seriously. It's absolutely hilarious. Anyway, let's quickly um, go to their live chat, get your reaction as well. Jenny Todd says, I watched Silence. The, if you haven't, you need to. Yeah, definitely, guys. That's uh, Tommy's uh, thing. Yeah, go check it out if you haven't already. It should be on his website. Oh, if you go on Twitter, the links are there anyway. Um, what else do we have in the live chat in regards to, obviously, in regards to your reaction about uh, uh, Tommy's uh, court case uh, today, um, is in a very rare situation, of course, uh, the judges decided to go with common sense um, and actually his human rights. <laughs> uh, what is going on? Um, yeah, we got uh, the left arm out saying, bless him. Uh, D and an F saying, uh, top man, Tommy. Uh, Bear TV says buzz in with a f football emoji. I love that. Um, Tony says uh, great news for Tommy, and uh, Sam says amazing for his kids. Yeah, let's not forget. But, but most of part of this whole saga and his ban from being in, in a normal public space, like right now, his bail condition says he's not, he's not allowed to be in London, for example, affects not just him but his kids and his family, and that is just sad. Um, if you do something evil and illegal. And if it's justified, then fair enough. But this whole situation with the altercation that you know happened a while ago in in, in Portugal, and I'm going to show you the video again if you haven't seen it in in a minute. His reaction, Tommy's, but he actually put his hands up saying, "Well, technically, it was my fault." He accepts it, but logically speaking, if a nutter confronts you in front of your family, tries to be aggressive. Then, you know, if, if you have a high temper like Tommy, then you're going to stand up for your family and defend yourself. But obviously that went too far. But if it was any other ordinary person, like an English football fan or some sort of football club fan, they would just, you know, um, give you a, some sort of a warning or caution or some sort of basic punishment and say, don't have fights. Now go home, go to sleep. But when it comes to like someone Tom Robinson, oh, you're banned. You know, they, they would even ban you from going to countries, which they've done. He wasn't even allowed to go there which is absolutely disgusting. Uh, <clears throat> we have Matt saying, now get these uh, Palestine protesters off our land. Um, yes, um, Richard says, it is tragic for Tommy's kids. Uh, they will have to watch Luton now. <laughs> I did say, obviously, he's, he's a Luton supporter, Tommy. I was like, no, no one's perfect, I guess, but he's going to kill me now. Um, but... <laughs> Of course, I'm not going to support Luton. Why would I? Um, I'm a Londoner, so I support United. <laughs> Don't start in the live chat. Um, Graham says, Tommy is not far right, um, but he has been right so far. Um, there will be a time when we are cheering for Tommy in Parliament soon. They're not going to allow that to happen. You know that, and I know that. Um, Shocking the way the establishment hound Tommy. They must be very scared of him and uh, what he may say. The thing is, if they put this much energy and effort into going after actual villains, bad Robin Hood characters, which always exist. For example, we actually had uh, people like Ajahn, Ajahn Chowdhury and the Islamic preachers who they went so far, too far, that even the establishment had to put them in prison and try to deport them. If they go after those actual bad apples, and of course any any anyone else with any political ideology, anyone who's actually in danger to the Western system and the Western values, then fine, use the state, the power of the state in the name of national security. But you can't just do it just because someone um, has a following and someone becomes influential, and but they haven't actually done anything treasonous. If Tom Robinson does treason, then fine. Constitutionally, we're like, well, yes, let's go after him. But that's not the case, is it? Um, if you just join us now, let's quickly go back to this quick video we have from Tommy when he came out of court celebrating. He was way too happy. <laughs> Actually, I'm happy for him and his family. Uh, let's go to him again. <laughs> oh, mate. I have just come out of court, yeah? I've been in court all day. I didn't go public about this. 
but I've been in court to appeal my football banning order to say that I should have a right to a family life. And guess what? Bedfordshire police had to go and give evidence and the Home Office sent someone to try and obstruct. And the Home Office person said that we cannot have him going to Germany in the summer. That's what this is about. I haven't been able to go to football for four years, yeah? My kids, I've just put in my family group chat. I mean, I've just put in my family group chat. Guess who's coming the game at the weekend, man? So the judge has agreed to, I've got no football banning order now. I'm so fucking buzzing. I am so happy, man. My solicitor, who was Chloe, was my barrister, but Melanie at Football Law Associates is who I used to appeal my ban. Because when you're two thirds of the way through your football banning order, you can appeal it. Do you know what the Home Office officer used? Because the Football Policing Unit is part of the Home Office. So this is government. They came and they tried to use my Section 35, where I was arrested in CS gas, as evidence of my bad behaviour. Because there's nothing else in the last four years. So I'm going football, man. <laughs> I'm so happy. Let's hope I just don't get any problems as I just walk through Luton Town Centre. I don't really care, actually. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm getting to see Luton in the Premier League. Do you know how upset I was? Do you know, like, I live for Luton. I don't just live for Luton, but my children, man. I, my, my, I haven't had a day at football. That's my day. My day was always football with my kids, man. And that was taken through my own fault, because I did hit someone in Portugal, but they did deserve it. They did confront me when I was with my wife, and they shouldn't have done it. But that's all in the past. I'm going football. I'm buzzing. <laughs> so... There are a couple of things. Um, obviously, um, as we said, Monday is also going to be in court uh, for his bail condition. And I'm going to be there. Hopefully, I'm going to basically, I'm, I'm getting in touch with him to kind of sort out the arrangements um, to report. Because again, the media will not probably be there. Uh, or even if they're there, they're going to spin it as usual. Um, but uh, we'll do that on Monday. But one thing you mentioned was the role of the Home Office and civil servants, apparently, today. Um, trying to stitch things up again or trying to put pressure on the judges I guess or something or try to spin the case uh, to make sure that he's, he, do, he doesn't get um, what he deserves and his freedom back essentially uh, but it didn't work the judges actually made the right decision and he had he had good lawyers uh, obviously Chloe um, uh, what was it uh, Carvel yes uh, who did a good job as a barrister uh, let's quickly go back uh, to you guys uh, Jackie Jones says uh, are you worried that they will come after you next. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the, but it, the thing is, if you don't give him enough, um, any excuse in terms of those who want to do things in the establishment, then you should be fine. But you never know. As I, the, the one thing that we have to do, and especially those with the platform, is continue to fight for British values, continue to fight for British people, continue to fight. Because we are, we want to actually protect the system. And they want the people in the system think we are the enemy. But continue to do that. But in a reasonable way and in a, in, a, in a very British way but don't surrender don't concede don't make concessions randomly but don't commit crime don't really give him any excuses but you never know I'm going to continue to do what I do despite uh, anybody warning against it saying my don't talk about this or anything I don't really care um, buy Tommy a large pint of beer yes well if I say my Monday then definitely uh, and it says Western values are Anglosphere heritage well absolutely um, and this is where uh, the sad thing is that the Anglosphere is uh, getting weaker now. Um, you, the, the, only, the only positive thing is about parts of the United States of America, like Florida and relatively Texas and other uh, states. But when you look at most of Canada, when you look at the, uh, Britain, even the Republic of Ireland um, and New Zealand, it's all a bit of a mess. Actually, Australia is fighting back. Australians, hello to Australia and all the patriots as well. Um, but otherwise, Anglosphere is at risk right now, which is basically the protector of Western values. Uh, Donna says, we have been called uh, occupiers in our own countries. Then what are the illegals? This goes back to what I said, um, I think, earlier today, which, which is a very good point. As Donna says, not only that the people who hate the West, they will see you. If you're a white person, they, they call you a colonizer in your own country, which is funny. Um, but at the same time, as I said at the beginning of uh, the last live stream, when the liberal left says integration with uh, multiculturalism and foreigners, what they mean is that you, as a white English person or as a, we a white Welsh person, you need to integrate with the new cultures who have now arrived here. But you still be careful, don't go to integrate too much because there will be cultural appropriation. 
but you're not allowed to get them to be like you because that is a that's basically being a colonizer again in your own country uh, problem is nobody listened to Enoch Powell and a few are listening to Tommy and to be fair more so than uh, before uh, mostly because obviously um, Tommy um, has now has a more of a public platform again thanks to Elon Musk um, but otherwise it's still very tough um, because uh, the political left for decades have been manipulating the working classes and claiming that they they are on the side of the working classes yet they've been betraying them on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for your super sticker, 20 pound super sticker. Uh, I really appreciate this. Thank you so much for the support. Obviously, uh, Anne knows uh, we, um, that we continue to get, I, I think this video will be monetized, but uh, most of the videos we're doing these days because of uh, the controversial topics and uh, the conflict in Israel, they continue to get demonetized anyway. But we shall continue our hard work with your support. Thank you very much. Um, Tommy needs to run for mayor of london i actually we haven't really covered this properly but uh um who's that crazy guy uh, george galloway <laughs> george galloway has actually confirmed he's going to be running we are now waiting for jeremy corbyn to announce that he's also running for london mayor this is finally an opportunity to get rid of uh, sadiq khan by splitting the vote george galloway Jeremy Corbyn, Sadiq Khan, all running at the same time from a London mayor is a perfect opportunity for a sound candidate to come and win. Now, of course, Howard Cox is standing as a Reform UK candidate and we have uh, Susan Hall standing as a Tory, but her campaign is now being completely hijacked by Tory HQ. It's going to be controlled, which is going to be very unfortunate. Um, Maya's doing a cracking job in this video. Um, again, people are going to assume I paid you to say that. Uh, let's go back to this thing. Obviously, we talked about uh, the the UN. They're too busy uh, getting all the member states together to vote against Israel tonight. Um, so, of course, of course, they love it. The gravy train of the United Nations. Uh, but uh, going back to the issue with Tommy, uh, this is what he posted on. I still want to say Twitter. I can't say X. It's Twitter for a while. Uh, if anyone has any problems surrounding football arrests or banning orders, make sure to use Melanie Cook uh, from uh, the Football Law Associates and ask for Chloe Carvel from 15 New Bridge Street Chambers as your barrister. They were absolutely amazing today. I still can't believe I won. I am so happy. The only thing I'm worried about is uh, he's posted this now on Twitter. Um, that law firm where Chloe works <laughs> could now get targeted by a uh, the, the hope not hate people and all the far left activists hopefully that's not going to happen but uh, the address is now public <laughs> on twitter but i think it should be all right obviously um these people would show their true faces if they even try anything like that i still love how the media including new media platforms like novara media left wing are still spreading propaganda about what happened on remembrance day but anyway we've already covered all that so it is also important to mention as we said, that Monday is going to be another big battle uh, about his bailing condition uh, in um, London, uh, Tommy. And uh, I'm going to try and be there to give you guys the latest update. GB Patriot said, Maya, I live in Bolton and no integration here. The whites in one part, Asians in another. So much for integration. They, 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 they never wanted this because um, part of it was actually the failure of the system and part of it was on purpose so in terms of the failure of the system was when so-called asylum seekers came alongside genuine asylum seekers from certain places it was home office a policy or government policy decades ago to send them to certain areas and those areas became well before they became ghettos they became more comfortable for certain people then illegal migrants and relatives of those who were already here for example from pakistan or from any any other country afghanistan then the other people, their neighbors and their relatives also left those countries, got to Europe, get on a boat or lorry um, and came from France to England because they knew all they have to do is reach that specific road in Birmingham or in Glasgow or in Luton or in London. Uh, and as long as they get there, they will know people and they will speak the same language and they don't even have to leave that area. There are bubbles of 
communities that are it's no longer about multiculturalism it's no longer about diversity it's because one culture um, or one faith is dominating in those areas it's not diverse now you can look at places like central london or west london that's diverse you have a lot of french people living there you have a lot of australians oh australians are taking over london but you got young professionals uh, from france from australia from england berlin london but still who are all here in west london and central london that that's what the liberals would call a diverse area and multiculturalism but it works when they're all young professionals and middle class the rest of it from east london to glasgow it's not diverse when one group is dominating that area you cannot do integration and as i've said so many times before there there could also always be a few people in those areas they're born in those areas now in east london for example even if they want to integrate even if they actually want to be more english they just can't because the environment that they're in would not allow it to happen they can't even leave um when they leave their house as a, as a teenager because they have to go to the same schools with everybody else they they hardly even meet a young person and they are living in the west but in their schools that there's not even a white person anymore and you expect them to integrate with everybody else, to just go hang out with them and talk about Taylor Swift or whatever white liberals talk about these days. <laughs> Some sort of Starbucks menu issue. Um, or talk to Owen Jones about going to Soho. But <laughs> they can't, even if they want to. We, we literally have created mini Pakistans and mini Middle Eastern places in the UK. And they are less um, diverse than places in the Middle East. You literally go, go to Dubai or Qatar or all these places. You see more diversity there <laughs> than the actual West. And it's absolutely disgusting. Even for the few good genuine migrants who want to integrate, they, they can't anymore. Unless they literally pack up the bag and leave and go and get a house in a village in Lincolnshire. But even Lincolnshire is now changing. But things are changing and we have to. Somebody in the establishment and some of these people who claim to be nationalists or conservatives or whatever in parliament they need to talk about this this is the big fight instead of talking about oh let's talk about the policy to stop the boats the stop the boat nonsense that that should be priority one that should be sorted out within half an hour i know it's easy to say i was just sitting here but you've had years to deal with that but the problem is not necessarily the small boat the problem is not necessarily the the, the migration policy going forward the, the, the problem is you need to have an honest conversation very uncomfortable com conversation about people who live in this country who hate this country what are you going to do with that how are you going to sort it out mass deportations anyway thank you so much for joining me tonight on 2c tv we're going to come back to you guys tomorrow with more updates and as i said monday tommy's going to be back in court for his bell conditions thing and we're going to be reporting hopefully from there i'm in touch with him get some confirmation about the details on my o2c and we are the media